Hi guys, welcome to my channel. Today's video is a usual one from the channel, which is another manga haul unboxing video. I've gotten a few packages from Right Stuff over the past few weeks, and I'm really excited to show you guys all the new manga volumes that I got. 2022 has been a really great year. I got so many new volumes from older series as well as new ones that were finally serialized in English. So I'm so, so glad to see how much my collection has grown over this year. And I'm so excited to see all the new manga volumes I'll get for the upcoming year as well. So yeah, thank you guys for sticking with me and watching all my manga hauls if you have. And yeah, this will be the final manga haul for 2022, but I'm excited to show you guys more manga haul in 2023. So without further ado, let's hop into the unboxing. All right, so starting off with the very first package, I actually just want to make like a quick comment about the packaging itself because I do enjoy right stuff like shipping things more frequently, but I do miss like the way they used to have the books like in these huge boxes and then with the spines on top because it makes the haul just more easier but now they just do like either like this way or there's one where like they're flat this like the books flat itself so it makes it harder to like show you know the same series and then talk about each um of the series in each box however like i think this haul is just kind of all over the place because some books are just in all the other packages so let me just try to pick out I think they might be like this like stored the same way but yeah I'm having some trouble taking some of the volumes out okay so first volume we have is the recent volume release for Mariko-chan I have been really enjoying the manga recently because I just love the horror comedy aspect of the series I find Mariko is just a refreshing female character and yeah, it's just has everything I really like. Some scary moments as well as just some funny moments as well and the art is just perfect. So yeah, it's a very enjoyable series and so excited to continue reading on the story. So that's Mariko-chan volume 6. Next up we have, let's see if I can this out without destroying it okay so we have i think another volume of laid back camp i can't remember if this is a most recent volume or just one that i'm missing but here it is oh the girls are so cute anyways the movie for laid back camp which is like kind of it's a non-canon movie i think um just got released on crunchyroll my friend and i actually watched the movie uh, during thanksgiving and it was so so good so yeah, I'm excited to read the manga though, and I cannot wait for season 3 because it's coming out I think in 2023. And looking forward to watching that. I actually have not read the manga, I'm just collecting the manga right now. But um, yeah, hopefully I'll have motivation to start reading the manga soon, but we'll see as well. Okay, next volume we have is, ooh, okay, I think this might complete my Takane and Hana collection. This is the infamous Out of Stock Volume 3 that I've been missing for a little bit, but here it is. This is a romantic comedy series, which has an age gap, but I just love the story so much. Absolutely funny. The main two leads have a very interesting dynamic with each other, and I adore it so much. Um, but yeah, I read the series a long time ago, and it was very enjoyable, and I can't wait to reread it now that I have the entire manga series. But yeah, so, so cute. I love the art, and I love the little short story at the end of each volume, because they're just absolutely hilarious. Okay, let's see what we have next. Ooh, we have volume 5 of Kami-sama Kiss. So yeah, slowly but surely collecting all of the out-of-stock volumes for Kami-sama Kiss. This series is just one of my top shoujo series that I read a long time ago, watched the anime as well, and it's been a while. I haven't reread the series in quite a while as well, but hopefully when I do 
have the chance to collect all the volumes, which I still think I'm missing quite a lot, then I will do a reread of it. Okay, next one. Uh, okay, so we have the newest volume of Requiem of the Rose King, volume 16. Now, I think I'm a little behind on Requiem of the Rose King because I think the last volume I read was like 14, so kind of behind on one volume, but yes, it is a very interesting historical fiction series, and I really enjoy it. Very dark, but also just lots of dramatic plot and tension, and I'm excited to finally catch up with the series, maybe when it actually ends, because I think this vo the last volume is either volume 17 or 18, so... I might just do a reread of the story once I get the final volume in English, but yes, art is fantastic. And yeah, that is Requiem of the Rose King as well. Moving on, we have one volume of 86. This is actually the manga edition. So I hardly ever collect both light novel, which is the original 86 story and manga adaption, but I love this series so so much that I I've decided to collect both mainly because I just love the character design of 86. And so yeah, your girl is going to start collecting the manga version of 86 as well. Um, hopefully I won't be disappointed. I actually have never read the manga adaption before, but I'm assuming it might be very similar to the anime. Though I think Lena looks kind of different in this picture. The art styles, it is a little bit different, but yeah, haven't really looked into much of the manga adaption, but I have heard like good things about it. So yeah, so we have, yeah, the manga volume 86, and I'm very excited to have both the light novel edition and the manga edition as well. We have the third volume of My Happy Marriage, a beautiful romantic love story. I am so excited to read this newest volume because we're going to get more insight of the main character's power i believe or i think we ended off like getting some more context on her power the main girl was raised in a family that just absolutely treated her very poorly and she gets into this arranged marriage with the male lead who is very intimidating at first due to lots of rumors however they soon realize that there's a lot of misunderstanding around them and have a really cute relationship so yeah i'm just excited for this next installment um more build up of their relationship as well as characters um involving both um each of the families as well so yeah very excited um light novel so i don't no pictures uh to show but yeah i just love the cover so so much it's so pretty and i'm so excited for the anime adaption that's coming out next year um, yeah, so many romantic shoujo stories that are coming out next year, and it's gonna be a good one for us shoujo fans. Alright, oh my god, this is what I've been waiting for. We have the first volume of Villainous Are Destined to Die. Oh, oh my god, I'm so excited. It's been a while since I've read this story, but um, it's kind of like a otome based game, which is something that I myself play, but basically it's a girl, um, she gets transported to a game that she plays, an ultimate based game, and she's actually the villainess of the game. Interestingly enough, it has designs of like the game features where she does make selections to kind of handle each of the male love interests in the story, and since she's the antagonist, she gets, I think, to see like the main heroine's like choices as well so very interesting very cool overall i love the story so so much and of course i'm always a big fan of more manhwas being um, translated in english i've been reading manhwas romance manhwas for so long and i'm very glad that eyes press has just taken the opportunity to serialize a lot of these series because yeah color, the art. It's a very in untapped market, at least in the US space. So 
so glad that we get official hard copy physical translation of these series when most of the time they're only available digitally. Um, but yeah, that is Villainous Are Destined to Die. Okay, and here is another one that's just been released, The Remarried Empress. Oh my god, uh, Ice Press is just pulling out all these new series that I have really loved and enjoyed. They definitely are picking up the more popular titles for sure, but I mean, these are popular for good reason. So my The Remarried Empress is a very dramatic, heart-wrenching story, I would say. It gets you frustrated um, because of just characters that make very interesting decisions. Very unlikable characters, but can't like, help but root the female lead. So basically the female lead has been friends with her, the king of the series for so long. They were childhood friends. And so yeah, she comes in Empress and she works really hard to be the perfect Empress. However, you know, something has happened in their relationship and the king or the emperor of the series, he ends up picking up a mistress when he's out and about and that mistress ends up kind of going into their home and stirs quite a lot of trouble. And so, yeah, you really feel for the empress because she's worked so hard to be the person she is and this level of betrayal is just not that great. However, there's a lot of surprises in the story as well, and I've been really enjoying it a lot. If you guys can pick up the English physical translation, this is available for free to read online on the Webtoons app. I think you can just binge all the chapters that are available right now, and obviously the physical only has some few chapters as well. So yeah, if you do want to give this a shot, I would recommend reading that as first. Almost all of these series that like Monha series that I mentioned before, they're available to read digitally on various apps. Um, some you can pay or like watch free ads to read them like if they're new chapters, but some like this one, you can just read the webtoons app without any like paying any chapters or anything like that. So yeah, really nice. I love the art for the story and uh, yeah. Rooting for Navier. She is a really cool protagonist. Anyways, that is The Remarried Empress. So for our next volume, we have Something's Wrong With Us, volume 11. Now when I tell you there's no better story than this when it comes to Cliffhanger, this series is it. Every volume I've ever read in the series always ends with a dramatic cliffhanger that makes you wanting more. I think the mangaka Natsumi Ando just does a really good job with the mystery and the building of each volume. She's very intentional with each chapter and oh my god, I cannot wait to read this newest volume. So intense. I love the romance. I love the mystery and just the overall revenge of the story is just perfect. Anyways, very love the story a lot and I can't wait to read this newest volume. Here we have is another Monfa series, Why Relay Ended Up at the Duke's Mansion. This is volume two. Wow, this cover is so pretty. I love the green, love the art. Relea and Noah are just the couple in Korean romance. Monfa, definitely the standard, love their relationship. And yeah, I'm so happy to pick this series up. Also, this series is getting an anime adaption that's coming out next year. I saw the preview of the anime series, like the teaser, and it looks so good. The VA for Noah sounds amazing. I think he's the main lead for Taming the Tyrant as well. And yeah, I was just so shook with the voice casting of this series. Anyways, very excited to have the series. I definitely will be doing a reread of the story eventually, but it's been a while. I, I definitely need to reread it eventually. But yeah, that is why Relaya ended up at the Duke's Mansion. So pretty. All right, so next we have is volume 11 of 86. I've been waiting for this volume for so long. Actually, I got this quite a long time ago. This box is actually quite an old box, but um, haven't had a chance to open it until now. Oh my god, I've been waiting for this volume so so long because I've been waiting to get some more plot developments in the present day. Just kind of like brief structure of the story. 
volume 9, we had present day plot development, and volume 10 was more of a collection of short story of Shin's past, and so there was kind of a pause on the main story, and now we're picking back up with volume 11, so very, very excited to read this. I'm going to sit down probably today and just catch up on this book, but yes. I've been seeing so many people talk about the newest volume on Twitter and I'm really glad to be finally like on track with 86 because I read the light novel basically just very recently after I finished watching the anime earlier this year and so I haven't been able to like read with other people with this uh, volume yet but now I get to join the club so yes so happy to have 86. It's an awesome adventure um, mecha story with lots of mystery involved and action pack scenes. So yep, that is 86 volume 11. Last but not least, we have one volume of Alia Sometimes Hides Her Feelings in Russian. Now this is a series I actually have not read before, but I heard a lot of people talk about it in the light novel community. It's a quite popular one, and I think the premise of the story is very adorable. Basically, it's about two seatmates. Bias is a very common light novel trope, but anyways, um, the main protagonist is the guy, and he talks to this girl who speaks Russian to him and confesses her like her feelings for him and all that stuff and she doesn't know that he knows Russian but he knows Russian so he understands what she's saying to him in Russian that's why it's like sometimes hides her feelings in Russian she's like telling him about her feelings and how she feels about him but yeah I think this is just a really adorable plot and I'm really excited to kind of take a shot at this book um her good things it's a very popular light novel I think and so yeah Sounds really cute and definitely up in my alley. So yeah, art looks stunning and very excited to read this book. And that is everything for the first box. And let's hop on to the next box. All right, so here is the second box for the haul. And I feel like I've been talking a little too long for some the first box because I'm recording right now in like 20 minutes. So I think I'm gonna try to speed it up because there's quite a lot of boxes I still need to go through, so yeah, let's get on with it. Alright, so here's everything in this box. I see a few Shoujo Beat volumes from where the angle I'm sitting, so let's pick it up. Uh, here we have is another volume of Kami Sama Kiss, so won't be talking too much about it, but here's just a brief flip through. I'm so, so glad to be filling up my collection and completing all the gaps that I have since I'm quite missing a lot of volumes of Kamisama Kiss, but yeah, so happy. Let's see, oh, another volume of Kamisama Kiss. This is volume seven, very cute as well. Oh, I'm so happy to make so much progress with this series. I know I'm still missing a lot of volumes, but better some than none, so yes. And, I guess we have our final Kamisama Kiss volume. Oh wow, this is such a cute volume of Nanami. She looks so pretty. I think this outfit is so gorgeous. I can't recall if she actually wears this outfit in the story itself though. I don't think so. But it's a nice manga art cover. Just a quick flip through and yeah. And that's another few volumes of Kamisama Kiss. Very, very nice. Uh, okay, and then I think the last shoujo beat, maybe? No, I have one more. But we have one volume of Beyond of the Dawn, volume 12. I've been waiting to get this volume for a while now, so nice to be getting some of the earlier volumes that I've been missing in the collection. Wow. All right, so we have the volume 3 of Fukurio Bed and Breakfast for Spirit. I still have not had a chance to read the manga of the story. Like, I watched the anime a while back, but yeah, definitely will catch up with the story. I think I'm missing like one more manga volume for this series before I have like all the seven volumes that are out so far. But yeah, very interesting, um, supernatural romance story, but it has like elements of cooking as well. So yeah, really nice. I love the series so so much um, when I watch the anime and I'm so excited to eventually read the manga for this one as well. Next we have is three volumes of 
the Savior's Book Cafe Story in Another World. Ooh, I didn't know how thin these volumes were, but we have volumes one, two, and four. So this is a romance isekai story. So yeah, basically this woman, I think she's either overworked somehow, but she gets transported to this, you know, magical land. And basically she kind of lives in this like book cafe and then she meets the male protagonist. Overall, this story, I wouldn't say it's like, the most dramatic story like I just think it's a very calm story very mature um, the plot and the you know situations and that occur in this story is actually like not that bad and I really enjoyed it when I read it a while back probably need to reread the story to get like a more of a refresher but overall I love how mature the female character is maybe because she's like older as well and I guess that doesn't matter if she's older but I just feel like she definitely acts her age um, which is really nice whoa the quality of volume 1 to volume 2 is so different like the pages here are, feels a lot thicker like this does not feel like a manga <laughs> uh, that's very interesting maybe they use a different printing material for this volume it does feel like kind of a light novel style texture okay and then volume four is like the same manga like i don't know if you guys noticed but the page for volume two was like a lot wider and like thicker than yeah the typical like volume like manga page style and texture that's really weird i don't know let me show you guys like a comparison See, like look how um, wider this is compared to like this page material so interesting anyways yeah very very wonderful story I love it like yeah very calm read I would say and the characters seem to be not problematic I do think their romance in the story is a little bit fast on my taste but who knows I don't I don't know anything <laughs> but yeah wonderful story and highly recommend if you guys want to check out the Savior's Book Cafe story in another world. Next we have is one volume of Skip and Loafer, volume 4. I adore the series so so much. It is about the main character Mitsumi. She is from this very rural small countryside and finally goes to the big city to you know start her high school life with her uncle. Her uncle lives in the city so she lives with him and so yeah I just really love Mitsumi's like development as she grows as a person in the city and meets all of these new interesting friends and characters in her new school. This is the male lead in the story as well and he also has a few interesting quirks to him as well but yeah I love the story so much. I love the character building. I love the main character's development and yeah she's just a very refreshing girl and love the art as well. And this is also getting an anime adaption as well. I'm really stoked with all of these series getting anime adaptions recently and so very excited to see how this adaption will pan out but yeah that is skip and loafer volume four here we have one gigantic book that i can't even show because the box is too tall and i don't want to readjust my camera but this is volume one of vivi i don't really know how to expect i know this is just a light novel so there isn't really much going on in terms of like the visuals but here it is. This is just some color pages. Very standard for light novels to have a few color pages in the volume. But yeah, I am really excited to see how this goes. I'm pretty sure this is just like a light novel edition of the anime series itself. But honestly, Vivi was a very incredible series that I watched last year? This year? Not sure. But I watched it when it was coming out and it was just so great. I love the story. It's like a time travel series that talks about like the human race being wiped out by robots, technology, kind of like a iRobot Will Smith kind of thing. But essentially like 
this disaster happens and then this guy makes a program where he's able to communicate with this girl Vivi who's also a robot to go back in time a hundred years before the disaster happens to see if they're able to change the outcome of robots taking over you know the human world but yeah I love the story but I don't really know how the light novel is going to pan out I kind of read a summary of it and it looks like yeah just like a light novel edition of the anime but I love the story a lot. I actually bought the VV Nendoroid as well, so I'm excited to get hers. She has her and her bear character, like this, her companion, um, Matsumoto as well, and just really excited to see how this light novel will pan out. So that that's VV. It's a very enjoyable series, and I love her character design. She looks beautiful, and the music in this series is so good as well. Like, check out the anime if you have time. It's it's great. Okay, and last but not least, we have two wrap books <laughs> um, because this is the Seven Seas like steamship line, which is like I think R seventeen R eighteen age demographic. But we have two volume twos. I don't even have volume one. Okay, so it must be in another box. But we have volume two of I'll Never Be Your Crown Princess, and then volume two of Outbride Beauty and the Beast. I don't really know much about these two stories, however, I just thought they were really interesting pickups. I actually, I think I read the first volume of Outbride. I think this is girl has like multiple love interests as well. They're kind of toxic though, I would say. I'm not sure, but we'll see once I read the second volume or first volume, I guess, again. But this one, I heard this is a little bit of a more better series. I don't know. Anyways, I'm excited to try both books. I kind of like my more spicier reads, so it's nice that Seven Seas has a line for more spicier adult rating books. Anyways, yeah, very glad to have these two volumes as well. And that completes our second box. So let's hop up to the third box now. So we have one wrap booked. I wonder, is this just a volume one of one of the ones I just got? Oh. Wow, I did not know this book was wrapped. Hmm, I feel like that's that's not what I expected. Anyways, we have Kunlun Generic Romance Volume 1. It does say parental advisory warning explicit content. I read this story a long time ago because this was originally fan scaled up to I think chapter 50 something. Um, and then it got officially licensed by Yen Press, so obviously the fan scanlation stopped translating the story. But it's about this female lead who lives in this kind of like wall city called the Kunlun. And this Kunlun is like an old structural like housing in I think China where it's like houses and apartments are like stacked. It's like a very interesting concept. I think in the present day this is like not really a thing anymore but in the city it still is and yeah she's just a really quirky character she has this male co-worker and they have like these very interesting banter with each other but yeah weird supernatural things seems to be occurring people are missing in the story and there's just a weird mysterious vibe to this little city and i just love the art so much i know the mangaka has written another story called After the Rain which I read a while back but wasn't really a big fan of but this story is just a piece of work so anyways I'm very captivated with the story I'm really excited that this was finally physically translated but now I have to wait forever to get to where I originally left off which is like chapter 54 that's gonna be so long like that's gonna be like so many volumes later and I don't know if I can wait that long We'll see. Anyways, we've got a long way going, but very glad to have this volume. And yeah, definitely if you're looking for a wild ride of a story with lots of twists and turns and, you know, mysteries that you just cannot explain, this is the one. And I just love it so much. But anyways, very amazing story. So that's Kroon Loon, Generic Romance. And then here we have this very red volume of Summertime Rendering, Volume 3. I've mentioned this before because I've recently been getting a few volumes of Summertime Rendering, but I watched this series 
um, with my friend during our anime watch party for the last two seasons. So the series has like 25 episodes and which is fully adapted um, the entire manga series as well. So yeah, I'm just picking up the manga to see if there's any difference with the anime adaption. I heard it's pretty true to story, but I feel like there's always some scenes in the manga that's cut out or there's, you know, different takes on how the anime is adapted compared to the manga, but I love the story. Very interesting time traveling mystery series, lots of supernatural elements as well. And overall, I just love the character. Shinpei's a fantastic male lead, and I love the other characters in the story as well. You can't um, help but root for them or just kind of understand where they're coming from. So yeah, I think this may be the last one I'm missing. I'm not sure, but this e this is the Omnibus edition. So there's two volumes in one, which is why it's a little bit thicker. I heard there's like box sets for summertime rendering. And I didn't even notice that was a thing because I probably would have picked up the box set, but here we are. We've gotten the regular volumes, which is kind of too late now, but yeah, that was interesting that I think I found out. Next we have is A Galaxy Next Door. <laughs> Picking up this volume as it goes, but I have not read this story. I know there's like some supernatural elements and um, kind of wholesome story, but yeah, I just know that the plot is about a guy I don't know what his occupation is, but he has like two siblings, his parents have passed away, and then there's this girl, she helps take care of his siblings. I might be totally wrong, but it is from the same author for our Sweetness and Lightning, which is a very wholesome father-daughter series that I really enjoyed. So the art I think looks great from the flip through so far, but yeah, I definitely need to sit down and read this soon. And there's an anime adaption too. so. Honestly, I might even watch the anime adaption before I get to the manga. That's usually how it goes. So yeah, that's a galaxy next door. Ooh, oh my god, I'm so excited. Okay, I think this is it. I'm gonna put this to the side and show you guys one by one. But we got all the volumes I'm missing for 86 light novel. Oh my god, I've already talked about 86 so I won't go too much into details. But yes, they finally restock the Missing Light Novel volumes for 86, and I'm just so excited. Ooh, okay. But yeah, Lena's so pretty. So I am very excited to have all the volumes. This is volume two. We have Shin and Federica. Very cool. Yeah, I've been just, I'm so stoked. This was the perfect time to collect the volumes because now I have all of them. Volume three, we have Shin and Lena. So beautiful. I'm very excited. I might even reread the series again just because now I have the physical copy on my hand. I read this digitally because I couldn't wait for the volumes to come out because at that time that I placed the order for 86, almost all the volumes were out of stock. And so I just could not help myself and I just bought everything like the ebook version on Amazon. But now we have everything and I just love like, you know color art and all that stuff as well. Here is volume six, which is my second favorite volume in the series. Lots of action-packed scenes and development in the mystery of the series as well. I'm covering more truths and of course my favorite volume. <laughs> volume seven can you see the vibe of this cover like this tells you a lot if you have checked out the anime and you want to know you know the development of shin and lena the two protagonists of the story the vibes them together the dance oh my god you can already tell what's happening in this volume but this volume itself it's a nice break from all of the chaos and sadness that's happening in the story which i think is a little bit of a spoiler but honestly like you're in for a treat for this volume. Like, ugh, I love this volume so, so much. Anyways, um, that is 86. Oh, okay. And then we have another 86 volume. This is the third volume of the manga edition. So quite exciting. But yeah, we'll see how the manga pan out. Ooh, this is a very beautiful panel of Lena. She's so pretty. Yeah, I think this the art itself is gives a different 
vibe to the anime so uh, I do think it's really interesting to kind of have three different versions of 86 on my hand I don't know but I love the story so much and I think like I don't think I did a great job explaining the series but honestly I entered it without really knowing much context besides seeing like a whole bunch of machines fighting each other so when I got into the series I was just hooked and then we have volume 15 of um, Teasing Master Togaki-san. I think this is the latest volume that's been released. So very nice. I've talked about the series many, many times on my channel. Very sweet middle school romance series. Lots of cute banter between the two leads and just really fun antics. I mean, you can already tell from the title. The anime is cute as well. But yeah, gonna read the manga eventually. So I'm very excited to have this. And last but not least, we have, oh, <laughs> volume one of 86 as well. I wish I kind of picked it up in the last few volumes, but yeah, very cute. So I have, I think, all three volumes of the manga as well. So, oh my god, I am now caught up with my 86 um, light novel manga edition. So very, very nice. I'm so stoked to be on track with this series. So Yep, so beautiful, and that is the third box. On to the next box now. Okay, so we're halfway there with the unboxing. Here we are, and I think the last few boxes as well will be a little smaller. So yeah, we're gonna go through this pretty fast because I think I'm already hitting like almost an hour. I'm not sure, but all right. So we have a few volumes of Idol Dream. I wonder if they're kind of placed in all in order. Idol Dream is kind of something similar to, I would say, Real Life, if you guys ever have watched Real Life, but basically it's about this adult female protagonist, kind of like in the slumps in her life, she doesn't like her job, she just, she just doesn't like the position she's currently at as an adult. She has a friend that she meets at a school reunion, older, close friend. He gives her a pill where it transforms her to a 16-year-old girl ends up getting picked up as an idol actress kind of type and yeah definitely living that double life dream so yeah we have just these two beautiful covers of the series i think i mentioned in my last previous unboxing but the mangaka has yet to made any development with the story after volume 7 I, the last we heard beginning of the year for 2022 she said that she's working on it and will end the series eventually but no word from her yet and so i don't know I, I definitely can't wait to continue reading the story because i do actually like it it has some interesting side plots i would say currently but hopefully we'll get some more development eventually but yeah this is the mangaka for the series is one of my favorite artists um arita tamura she's known for her amazing artworks very recognizable artwork as well created so many wonderful shoujo series that I love and so yes I just I literally collect all of her series because I just love all of her art and the amount of detail she puts into the character so that was Idol's Dreams and then we have ooh, some more Arena Tamura volumes okay so we have another volume of Idol's Dreams so they did not really organize this very well but it is what it is so this is volume five so cute here we go and then we have another arena tamura series as well which is short temper melancholic i can't remember if i've read the story or not but i think this is more like a one-shot series and so yeah just picked it up on a whim because why not like I mentioned, I am literally collecting all of Arena Tamura's work because I do really love her art style and her stories tend to be very good as well. So I just tend to love collecting series where the art is just my type of art. So yeah, that is this other volume as well. Okay, some more shoujo beat. This is like all shoujo beat volumes, I assume. So okay, so another Arena Tamura. Um, series. So this is Ion. This was an interesting um, concept, but I can't seem to, I'm blanking on what the plot of the story. That was all of Arena Tamura's volume. So here, our last volume of this box, we have Short 
Kate Cake. I personally have not really read this story all too much. Like I read a few chapters. I know like it's kind of like a love square triangle type story and yeah. Eventually I feel like I'll get to this story but so far I have not had the time to read it but yeah that is Short Cake Cake. Very excited to have another volume in the series and that completes this box. Let's move on to the fifth box now. We have another box to open so let's just go through this. Alright so first volume in this box we have volume three of Skip and Loafer. So so happy to have this. I do want to clarify um, Mitsumi, the main character of this story, moves from the countryside to the city and lives with her aunt, not her uncle. And I apologize for making that mistake. And so, yes, wanted to clarify that detail. I love Mitsumi's relationship with her aunt. It's so, so special. And I love how much they share and talk about, you know, Mitsumi's struggle as she kind of navigates her life in this new area. And I love how much support her aunt does give to her as well. And just, her aunt as a person is just amazing. I love, I just love their relationship so much. And so I definitely wanted to clarify that point because yeah. And then we have volume six of Skip and Loafer. I think this is the most recent volume. So I'm just gonna do a quick flip through of this volume as well. So pretty, love the art. Oh, this panel is so, so cute. So yeah, that is that. Volume 6, and that is Skip and Loafer, and then we have um, another volume of Kakurio Bed and Breakfast. I can't recall if I said that I've now completed Kakurio. This is one now, it's still missing, so I need to double check if I have all the volumes of this series so far or not, but very happy to have another volume of this as well, so very cute. And then of course we have another volume of Kamisama Kiss, volume 8. Look at Tomoe, he looks so good. Wow, I'm very happy. This cover is amazing. Just a quick flip through as well because we talked about the volume already, the series already. So yeah, that is Kamisama Kiss. Uh, so just lots of more shoujo beat volumes that I recently got. Here we have is volume 22 of Snow White with the Red Hair. I believe this is the most recent volume release. Very nice. We have our infamous Obi on the cover, fan favorite. We have Zen on the back. Love the story so much. It is a very nice adventure series following a girl named Shiryuki who has left her home country and ends up bumping to Zen, a prince from another country, and they go on as a really amazing adventure. And now Shiryuki is just kind of doing her own thing and learning so, so much. And I just love her character's development in the story. Also, Zen is awesome. It's a great male protagonist as well. Love the friend group of Snow White with the Red Hair. It's a very enjoyable series. Next we have is volume four of Imakoi. Cute romantic shoujo series. Two couples that really developed their relationship or got together early on, but now is developing their relationship as a couple. So I cannot wait to get more insight into their relationship and their progress as a couple. Very cute. Love this wholesome story. And I cannot wait to get the English physical translation of Wolf Girl Black Prince because yeah, it has the same mangaka. She did A McCoy and also Wolf Girl Black Prince. But yeah, that is that. And then, oh, another volume of Kamisama Kiss, another beautiful cover of Nanami. She's so pretty. Yes. Quick flip through and yeah. So beautiful. Art is just A plus. But yeah, that is Kamisama Kiss. And then we have the next installment of Kageyasama Love is War, volume 24. Um, I've been reading this series through fan scanlation and so recently the uh, 
manga has ended. Really wonderful romantic comedy series about friendship and you know a group of students going through high school together. Oh my god, love it. Jam pack action and plot development as well for so many characters and I can't help but feel like empty now that the story has officially ended but yeah I just cannot wait to get the manga like the last volume as well I think they just released the manga cover for the last volume of, Ka of Kaguya-sama Love is War and it looks so cute with all the characters on the cover and I'm really excited to get that like it's a double cover like spanning on both covers so oh my god yeah so stoked cannot wait to see the final volume um soon but yes and here we have is the first volume of in the clear moonlight dusk uh this is a story actually i read a while back before but i haven't um really read too much of the story so I don't really have much context, but I think this one has a lot of potential, so I will read it. It is a high school romance story about, yeah, two characters who seem really cool. <laughs> I don't know, but yeah, I'll take a shot at reading this again. It's been a while since I've even read like the first few chapters, so I can't give much context to that. Um, next we have is another volume of when will Ayumu make his move now there's a story I might regret get collecting this would be one of them I watched the anime back in the uh, spring season I think and I thought there was a lot of potential in the series I love the cute little teasing dynamic of you know the two main characters um yeah, Ayumu and Yurishi, they're really cute. I love their little banter and the whole shogi, like, I'll beat you senpai type vibes. However, I recently kind of started reading more into the story, like the fan scanlation. I think my least favorite type of, like, trope is love triangles that span too long in a story. Like, Love triangles are fine. I am all in for a good love triangle. However, if the love triangle seems to have been resolved, but just like prolonged, that's an issue on my end. And so, yes, this is the direction the story is heading and I can't help but feel like I'm gonna not collect the series anymore, which is really sad because I do like the dynamic of the story and I like Tagaki-san, which is written by the same mangaka, but this one is just, not for me so i probably will have to <laughs> remove this story from my collection because based on the way it's going right now which is like i think almost over 100 chapters in yeah i don't know why the mangaka's doing it maybe you know love triangle boost sales but i don't know it's just not for me and then the last volume we have is Game Between the Suits Volume 2. This is kind of like an angst romance series about two people who are at opposite end of what they want in a relationship. They're in a friends with benefit type, but um, yeah, they both have different intentions on this relationship, which makes it very, very frustrating to read. But I do like the female character. She knows what she wants, and I root for her for all that she does but yeah the story can kind of raise your blood pressure level and i'm so surprised that seven seas picked this up because literally this manga has not been updated for over like almost two years there's also like a high school version of the series as well part of the game series and that one's also really good but also has not been updated um and so yeah i don't know if the mangaka is sick or not that is game between the seats though and that is our fifth box. Let's head to our very last box. So here's an overview of the final box. It's all spined up, so we'll see what's in here. But first we have is... Okay, 
We have two volumes of Time Stranger Kyoko, another Arena Tamura series that I enjoy very, very much. Um, short, very short series, only three volumes long, but it's basically about this girl. She is a princess, but living in like kind of like the commoner world. However, her dad wants to bring her back and like have her like ascend to a throne. However, she doesn't want to. So essentially she goes on this mission to find her like lost twin sister and meets like a whole bunch of other gods to help her with this mission. I think there's like, I don't know, 10 plus gods. I'm not too sure. <laughs> it's been a while, but yes. So that is Time Stranger Kyoko. I think from what I've heard, the series was supposed to be a little bit longer however it looked like um it ended up being axed for some reason or arena Tamura just didn't like want to continue the series anymore but it does give me a little bit of like fushugi yugi vibes just based on like the type of like setting of the story and yeah the overall plot as well so yeah i just course love the art and I think this is just a really nice like introductory series but definitely not a lot to a lot of not a lot of substance just because of how short the series is but yeah that is Time Stranger Kyoko next we have is a volume of Yona of the Dawn this is the latest volume that was just released so yeah we have a beautiful cover of Huck and Yona, I just love the adventure and the world building of the series. It is just amazing. And yes, thoroughly love all of the character development for each of the main characters. And yeah, I always look forward to reading the upcoming volumes for the series. But quite a long adventure. I don't even know when the series is going to end. But we'll see. And next we have is Fly Me to the Moon. This is also another latest release, volume 14. Just love the character um, development between Sakasa and Nasa. I love the romance. I love the supernatural elements as well. It's just so, so cute. And I recently just watched the OVA that was uh, that came out and it was so cute as well. So yeah, I'm really excited to check out the second season that's coming out next year and yeah hopefully we'll get some really cute animated um tono kaka kawaii content as well but yeah very glad to have this newest volume uh of course uh another snow white with the red hair volume i think this is like yeah another uh, older one because the last one i unboxed was the volume 22 but i did also get volume 21 so we have the the brothers, very handsome. I already talked about Shiryuki and Zen, so I won't be just gonna flip through kind of the contents of the volume, but yeah, very excited to have this in the collection as well. I think my like big, like my biggest like pet peeve of the story is that the release is quite slow. Um, I think it's like once every two months. And we usually get, I don't know if it's partial chapter, it's probably full chapters, I can't remember. But yeah, the release, we're, I think we're like pretty close to like the actual Japanese releases. So uh, yeah, and then we have our last series with two volumes. So we have volume one of Idol's Dream. So beautiful. This is the main character of the series. And then we have volume two. So yeah, this is her, um, yeah. Chikagi. This is her adult form and then this is her younger idol form. But yeah, just gonna do a quick flip through since I've already talked about this series as well. The art is immaculate. Arena Tamura never disappoints. Yes. And then here we have volume two. So, so pretty. I just love how like beautiful her characters are, like villains, protagonists, even side characters. There's just so much details that go into like them. So yeah, I just love it. Anyways, that is the last box from Right Stuff and let's hop to the next clip.
Okay, so the final item I want to show you is actually not a manga related item, but merch that I got recently. I didn't know if I wanted to include it in this video, but since it came like on the day I was unboxing all my manga, I thought it would be a nice treat to show you guys what other item I got. Uh, I already opened the box because my address is like written all over the front of the box, so yes. So the items that I got is actually an anime NYC exclusive from Kina Kunia. Uh, you probably already know what it is, but Kina Kunia had a few exclusives for this convention, uh, one for Attack on Titan, and then also Watsukoi. And if you guys don't know, I'm a big fan of Watsukoi. Um, Kina Kunia did do an anime expo exclusive when they attended the convention back in July. So I was so surprised when they did an anime NYC exclusive for New York as well. So yeah, I have a few items that I got with the help of a proxy who reached out to me when I was looking for someone to get these items. They were really, really nice um, and the proxy fees were uh, really good as well. So I didn't... Uh, mind paying extra for the items that I got but essentially I just had them pick out like pretty much all of the what's a koi exclusive kinakuni item and also one extra freebie from another booth so let me guys show you guys the freebie first and then all of the what's a koi stuff so the first freebie item that I got is this beautiful freebie mirror for Oshinoko. This was handed out in the Yen Press booth the first day of Anime NYC. So yeah, my proxy did grab the freebie mirror that came with it. And so I'm really, really stoked to have this. It's a really beautiful postcard as well. And of course we have Ai Hishono on the cover. So yeah, I'm so stoked for the upcoming anime adaption for Oshinoko. It is one of my favorite series I'm reading right now. Uh, very intense mystery uh, idol entertainment story. Um, lots of unpacking. So if you haven't read the manga yet and you're planning to check out the anime, you're in for a wild ride. So yeah, I'm so glad to pick this up. This is so beautiful. I is a wonderful character and she the art of this series is immaculate. So yeah, that is the freebie I got. Everything else is the Kino Kunia exclusive. So I'm just gonna take everything out and then show you guys each item one by one. Okay, so here is the What's a Koi Anime NYC Kino Kunia exclusive illustration. So yeah, it says New York City has a uh, Hirotaka and Narumi and they're standing next to the Statue of Liberty and it's also signed by the Mangaka itself. I believe they actually like created this design exclusively for Anime NYC but oh my god look at it it's so beautiful. I just love how like they incorporate like the landmark of this design so it just makes it very unique to the convention itself. I've never ever been to New York but hopefully one day I can actually go and experience the city myself but yeah I just thought this illustration was just so adorable and yeah so this is also like the acrylic plate itself was something that was given at the anime expo like they had an acrylic one as well um also they had a t-shirt version so I did pick up a t-shirt version uh the size the small size was like a medium so it's pretty huge on me because I'm usually more of like a x small or like a small in like adult size but yeah they only had medium as the smallest size we also have this huge tote bag so i'm excited to use this when i go shopping very nice quality i love the color and yeah it's nice it's a cute very cute tote bag and last but not least um they also made a poster version of the same illustration but this one is actually huge i don't have like I don't know if I can show you guys the whole entire thing. Same illustration, but as you can see from the detail, it's actually holographic, which is so, so nice. Like, I, they, they show the holographic details in picture, but in person, this looks so cool. And the poster is, like, huge. Like, I can't explain the size of it, but it's really big. And so, yeah, I don't know where to display it, but it will be displayed soon. So, yeah, that is the poster. And one final item is actually a freebie. So if you made purchases, I think over $50 for the What's a Coin merch, you also get 
same format, like, you know, same illustration, different format, but a freebie keychain. Um, so I thought this was really adorable, and yeah, so <laughs> same illustration. I just bought, like, one of everything because I just thought, like, the items itself look really nice, and, you know, it's collector, it's exclusive. I really am so thankful for my proxy to be able to get me all of these items um, so I can avoid, you know, paying, like, resale prices because they're... I've seen a few and they're quite expensive, so I'm glad to be paying this for retail. And yeah, uh, everything came in really great condition and I'm just so happy to have this beautiful, beautiful illustration as well. It looks so amazing and I don't know if they'll ever do another Wotokoi different location as well, but that would be pretty cool if they do it for another city because yeah, I think this is just a really cool idea. Anyways, that is everything and let's head out to the outro. Okay, so here's an overview of all the manga volumes that I got for today's haul, as well as the special unboxing for the What's a Koi Kine Kuni exclusive from Anime NYC. I hope you guys enjoyed me talking about all of these new manga volumes as well as the special item. I cannot believe this is the final manga slash light novel haul for 2022. It's been incredible seeing how much my collection has grown over the past year as I actually made haul videos pretty much every time I received a shipment from Red Stuff Anime. And yeah, I am looking forward to see how much my collection will grow um, in the upcoming year. And so yeah, thank you guys so much for sticking around and watching all of my videos for this year. I really appreciate it. And yeah, I guess I'll see you guys in my next video. Until then, take care. Happy holidays. Bye.